I'm going to ask our first speaker to come on stage. It's um, Marie Eclan. She works at Elia Partners, a great VC fund in France. And she's also the co-founder of uh, France Digital. So if we could have a welcome for Marie. Thank you. So Marie, actually, I think the, the interesting thing probably to start with is actually to maybe present a little bit your experience as a VC in France. You've been in investment since the year 2000, is that correct? That's correct. So you've probably seen the ecosystem and the access to capital in France develop a lot uh, over the years. What do you think have been kind of the biggest changes that you've seen in the last 12 years? Yeah. So to start with, I think year 2000 was really the, um, the entry year for a lot of VCs in the industry, it was a real open door uh, with the uh, with the bubble. I mean, I started in year 2000, but if I look at a certain number of my colleagues, it's it's the same thing. So, the industry was uh, really opened up, and we got a lot more capital coming in starting year 2000. Even if the picture from there has really changed a lot, um, the what I would say is that. Knowing that there's something that is really important to have in mind is that the VC industry in France has matured a lot. There are some teams here that have been working together for um, the last 10 years, and the venture capital um, as a profession is really an experienced-based profession. So that means that there's a lot of practice, best practice that was imported from the US that are now totally standard practice in France. And I believe that we are one of the most mature industry in Europe for the venture. So we should keep in mind that there's the, the US is really out of uh, uh, range uh, in terms of amount raised and in terms of how the, I think there's something like, um, I can't remember the number, so I'm going to say something, but it's a huge number of the uh, GBP who is coming from companies that are, have been VC-backed in the U.S. I mean, Google, Facebook, all these companies uh, that are now the, the big economical giants in the U.S. have been VC-backed. So we're not here yet. There are some that are coming in. But just to keep in mind, there's a lot of... Uh, now, we have real, real professionals. We have uh, a level of quality that has really raised. Now, in terms of strategy and terms, uh, and team, sorry, there, there's different things that you have th that have been evolving since year 2000. Number one is there was a lot of corporate teams that were started in these p at that period, like uh, Europat Web, V Ventures. Uh, every corporate who saw the internet bubble just started its own fund. Um, problem is that at the end of the bubble, everybody stopped. And as you know, the venture capital industry, I mean, for a fund, it's 10 year, it's a 10 year time if you really want to have returns. So basically, there have been a, a start and stop in year mm -hmm. 2000, and, and all the corporates tried to come in the venture capital industry and just stepped out. And so it was rebuilt on retail funds in France. The FCPI uh, that were launched in 99 by Allegre uh, have been a, a very important port part of the amount of money that was raised in the industry for the past 10 years. And this has been pushed up by the Loi TEPA from Sarkozy in, in 2008. So there's a lot of funds in France that have money coming from retail. Um, and this is, a ver this is very specific. And this means that these type of fund have different constraints than the, fund, the type of fund we raise. Because the tax advantage that the, the, the um, individual have when they subscribe to a, type one, one a, a, a fund of this type is uh, counterbalanced by the fact that the fund has to invest very quickly the money back into the economy. So this means that 60 or 60% 60 of the fund have to be invested in 16 months uh, within private, I mean, within uh, private companies. So this is very different from a fund like me, where I have a four to five year investment period. So we're very selective. We, we can, but it's the normal thing about you, the state want the money to be put back in the in the ecosystem. <laughs> so what I mean is that these type of fund invest in uh, more mature companies. And, and tell me what kinds of companies you guys have invested in. I know your fund yeah. has actually become a bit more early stage recently. So Exactly. So another trend is that team become focused on one particular sector. So we have always been investing only on digital economy, but there's a certain numbers of team like Sofinova or 
uh, Origa, Ventec, all these type of, of teams were investing also in life science and digital economy and clean tech. It was very, very large. And now the LPs are asking us to be, speci to be speci specialized sorry, mm. in one sector. Mm. So we at LIA are, are specialized in digital economy. And there's something else is that the venture, it's very difficult to raise venture money today, especially in Europe where it's, it's, it's difficult anywhere in the world, but in Europe, you also have the euro risk, meaning the, that, for example, all the US LPs are really afraid of that and do not want to put the money inside Europe on top of the venture problem. And, and is this manifesting itself? Are there a yes. lot of funds that don't have money There's anymore? a lot of funds that don't have money and the uh, amount of public money inside the fund have been moving up from 35% three years ago to 60%. Mm. So it, it, it's compensated a little by a public effort, but it's a, it's a real problem that we have today. We need to really uh, get, ev get, get different investors back into the, uh, the, the uh, financing of the venture capital industry, especially we need insurance company to come back. We, need, we don't have pension funds in France, and you know, but it's mm -hmm. the equivalent. We need corporates to, to come back, mm -hmm. etc. And the public effort has been focused on seed stage in France. So for us, we totally pivoted last year from raising a second venture fund to raise a seed fund that we just closed. Mm -hmm. And that was because it, we wouldn't have success we wouldn't have reached a success raising a venture fund, but it was easier with that public effort to raise a seed, st a seed stage fund. That's number one reason. Number two reason is a good reason, is a very good reason, is that it's also what we did best in the first fund. So it was easier mm -hmm. to raise it because our performance on seed, we had a multi-stage investment mm -hmm. fund before, and what we did best was really the, the, the earliest investment. So you're actually seeing it in a very positive way. Yes. Okay. And how is actually the fact that your fund is now going to be focusing entirely on seed? What is that going to change? I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs in France do say, we can't raise seed early stage capital. We don't have enough of it. Um, is this going to be changing that? I, I think it's going to be changing really the landscape because we're not the only fund who mm -hmm. does it. Innovacom, for example, just trades a seed sales fund, whereas the, before they, were, they had a, a more venture fund. So I believe this first step is going to be easier. Mm -hmm. However, it's going to be the step after that's going to be more difficult because everybody's moving either up the chain or down the chain, either to seed or to our later stage investment strategies. Mm -hmm. And so there's a real hole in the middle on, on the venture. Okay. On the venture. And uh, just coming back to something that you actually said earlier, you were talking a lot about maturity of, um, of the VC market. What does maturity actually mean? What does it, does it result in? Uh, so uh, there's, um, I would say it's best practice, mostly best practice plus you have experience and business models. So, for example, I can see that I can really add more value to a company today than what I would have done 10 years ago because I have seen a lot of different uh, business models succeed or fail. Mm -hmm. um, I have seen, uh, I know a lot of different people that I can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, make the match with the company or just to give an advice and mentoring or uh, or to, to become a manager of the company, et cetera. So it's, it's a question of the, the ecosystem has built itself as well. There's also a lot of entrepreneurs who, when, once you're an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur for your whole life. Mm -hmm. So they're starting up over and they want to transfer their knowledge, they want to transfer the experience, they want to share. Uh, and that's new, that was not happening 10 years ago. So the whole ecosystem has also matured as well as the VC industry. Mm -hmm. And so I believe it's, uh, it's a lot easier today if you can succeed in entering that ecosystem to succeed. So it, does it also mean that there are more funds maybe specializing in, in very different areas? Um, kind of as you said earlier, like you have Sophie Nova that's now, you know, kind of a little bit more specialized, maybe life sciences than it was before. Some and funds are doing strictly um, early stage. Is this, is this a sign of market maturity? Are there other signs of market maturity as well? Oh, good question. Um, I, think, uh, uh, I think it's more a market trend. Uh, for me, if you look at the, the U.S. model, which is the more mature one, and uh, as funds like Index, for example, that I, I do believe have really found a model. For us, 
as a, as a company, we have an issue mm -hmm. in being specialized in only one kind of fund is that every three years we need to raise a new fund or we're dead, mm -hmm. basically. And that's not a good business model. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can <laughs> tell you. So I can understand. So you need to have a different type of products that you sell to your clients in order not to have, you know, that that mm -hmm. very strong threat on your shoulders every three years. Okay. So if you look at index, they have different type of funds and that are, it's always on digital, like, ah, no, they are doing life science as well, but they're raising a new fund every year, every six months, and basically they're returning the money to their LPs, the amount they're returning every year is the amount they raise. Okay. So it's money coming in, money coming out. That's a mature team. And how, how is this impacting the local entrepreneurs in France? Is this meaning that we have more startups that are getting more access to funding than they were before? Does this, does this change something for them? Um, yes. I've, there's also something, uh, I think, in general in France, the entrepreneurial culture and the venture capital industry is just not known. So to change really and in a dem democratic way, that not only for us, little ecosystem, you know, to really have the country saying, mm. you know, it's an opportunity, you can, you can build your company, you can have access to capital, and, and to be really something else than just this. It's only six, 600 million euro invested in a company, mm. in private companies every year. That's not very much. So if you really want to put that effort, I think it's going to change. Uh, you need to democrat. You need to make it known. Whenever I go to um, incubator or talk to entrepreneurs and explain, you know, what is our our business and what what it is to have a venture at your capitalist at your capital, what does it mean? Is it good? Is it bad? It's mm -hmm. just a choice that you make because you have ambition for your company, but there are some constraints that come with it, and it's not known. From for so from my perspective, I think it's going to be really different the, the day people talk to each other and the day it's integrated into universities, into mm -hmm. schools that you n can, instead of going and work for a key account, build your company. And there's way of, and if you want to be innovative and if you, if you want to uh, build a new product, it's going to cost you money and money you don't have and the only way to do that is go to venture capital. So if you don't have that state in mind that is coming through schools, through universities, through research labs, etc., it's, no, it's not going to change except at our local, very local Parisian ecosystem. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. And I imagine the, the majority of companies that you see have already raised some form of capital before they come to you. What is the, the general trend? Is it love money from friends and family? Is it going to crowdfunding platforms? Is it OZO? How are they, how are they doing it? So this has changed in the past 10 years, um, thanks to TIPA, mm -hmm. the Loire, uh, and thanks to the fact that there's this new generation of web entrepreneurs that are really playing a role into helping new companies uh, growing up. So before it was really love money mm -hmm. and OZO, and now s uh, for for a greater number of cases, I mean Kima, you know, mm -hmm. you see the amount of uh, of companies that they're they are financing. So for a really greater number of them, they also have real business angel money from entrepreneurs or people from the ecosystem that believed in their um, company and their project, and that that they financed them in the first round. So I see the business angeling scene really uh, getting more professionalized and, and n not professionalized, just more web entrepreneurs, people coming from the digital economy. Okay. Um, I have three more questions and then we'll take a few questions from the audience. I think um, the first one that I want to ask you actually, just because you've mentioned Lua Tepa a few times and now there's a new government in place and things may be shifting around a bit, what changes have actually happened since François Hollande came into office or what do you think is going to happen? So today everybody is looking at the government uh, <laughs> kind of afraid <laughs> 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 because they don't, th uh, people think there are some good things that there, there have been some um, uh, abuse, some people that were, um, I mean, we, you can change a little the law, but basically it, there has been a lot of good things coming out of it because people went through the financing of 
young companies that are innovative, that are risky. Mm -hmm. It's risky business. You can lose your whole amount of money, and it's so. so um, and there's been a lot of money coming in. So there's something that we should not destroy. You know that particular. Um, uh, it's so we should not destroy that positive effect. Mm -hmm. Now nothing has been done yet, so it's only you know people kind of saying, uh, expecting things to happen, um, and so I hope the um, government will understand that today the economy needs to go forward and to renew to to renew growth. It needs not only to look at existing companies, because we will not solve the unemployment problems looking only at existing companies. We need also to create new value, mm -hmm. or for existing companies to take bets in innovation, in more digitalizing themselves, etc. And so for that, we need investing in businesses. And I think if we have a fiscal effort to do, it should be on productive investments and not on money who is only staying in the... Uh, that is not pro productive for the economy, that is not creating value, that is not creating um, jobs, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. So I hope the priorities will be set in the government's mind, and I know there has been a lot of, it, there has to be efforts from the whole country, but I believe we will not go forward without investing in innovation, and especially in digital economy. It's a major growth opportunity that we have, mm -hmm. and we have in France the talents to really be successful. We have the infrastructure, and in five years' time, we can create a lot of value. And I think probably one of the best examples is actually one of your portfolio companies. Um, so this is my, my second question was, was Criteo, like how have you seen that company grow? <laughs> what has kind of been also the, the funding strategy? Because they're not just funded by Elia, they're funded also by US fund and I think maybe a uh, British fund. Um, so if you, if you also want to talk about, you know, how is, is French capital sufficient for a company that wants to be an international, you know, Google or whatever? Yeah. So one of the uh, things that we have to work on in France is the fact that it's absolutely not sufficient. We can build, with the, venture f the French venture capital industry, we can build a um, 20, 30 million euro revenue company. I mean, we cannot build a global leader because the, the biggest fund is around, uh, I mean, the Publicis and, f and um, Orange Fund is different, 300 million euro. Um, so that's the biggest fund, mm -hmm. but I think there's a part in seed. I mean, it's, it's staged it. So, and to give you uh, numbers, the growth index fund is 500 million euro. And so we do not have in France the power, the capital power to build global leaders only with the French venture capital industry. Mm -hmm. So the classical way, if you have ambition, is to get a, a seed round in France, Series A in France, Series B in Europe with one of the big players like Index, Axel, Balderton, um, and then to go abroad to the U.S. and to get a, uh, if you want to be really successful in the U.S., you need a U.S. brand. That means you need a U.S. VC because it's, it's going to help you locally mm -hmm. to hire. It's not only the customers, it's hiring. It's really tough for a French company to move to the U.S. and to hire good people considering in digital, in digital economy the competition that you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Facebook out there, it's Google, it's all these, all these players, right? Twitter. So if, if you really want to hire good people, then you need to be able to d demonstrate your, your potential. And if you have a validation from a US VC, you're, you're a lot better than if you don't. Mm -hmm. So this is what happened for Criteo. To answer your question, it's we raised the seed round with Edenfest mm -hmm. in France. And then for the second round, we got Index on board. And then for the Series C, we raised money from a US VC, which is Bessemer Venture Partners. And we didn't actually need money, but we thought it was strategic for the company to have a local mm -hmm. partner, especially since Jean-Baptiste Rudel was moving out to Palo Alto. And uh, he was starting up from scratch there, basically, without no network, no. Yeah. <laughs> and so having uh, uh, someone uh, near him 
with the uh, Rolodex, with everything, it was important to start with the brand. And well. it, it looks like it's worked pretty well. <laughs> it did. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess my last question before we get questions from people in the room, it's uh, about France Digital, which is this new association that you guys have created. And it's not necessarily got a venture capital objective, but maybe you can kind of tell why, what is the objective of the organization and why did you feel that it was necessary? Yeah. So the ob it's an association that is. Um, uh, joining forces between venture capitalists and uh, entrepreneurs. So it's really 50-50. We have two presidents, one from coming from one entrepreneur and one investor, and we have a board which is divided in two, etc. So it's really, you know, we want to show that we're not defending one industry or one corporation or the other. It's really we want to defend the ecosystem. And it was pretty natural for us because we're basically when we're on board of a company, we all have the same interest and the same vision and the same alignment is that we want to create value on the for the company and that's the only way everybody's going to you know is going to uh, be performant and so we s when we saw you know that the digital economy is not considered is, is not people do not realize the the opportunity we have in it, uh, fr on a, from an economic standpoint in investing in that particular area, we decided to create France Digital. Mm -hmm. And so that's number one, to say, you know, you guys, we, we have amazing opportunities in digital economy. So the first thing we did is to show them the potential. So we did a barometer with Ernst & Young on 108 startups to see the evolution in terms of revenues, in terms of employment, et cetera. And results are amazing considering the uh, um, uh, today's world. It's uh, in 2010, uh, these startups were s doing 750 million euro. In 2011, it was a billion. So it's a 33% growth rate on revenues. And in terms of employment, it was 25% growth rate. So it's from 4,000 to 5,000 people employed. And what's interesting, it's young people. Average age is 32 years old. In the uh, CAC 40 is 41 years old. And these young people are hired in CD, you know, in long-term contracts. It's 87% of them in long contracts. So it's, it's qualified and, um, and long-term jobs for the young people plus we're natural born global companies. So 40% of the revenue is done abroad. So today, everybody's talking about competitiv competitivity of our companies, et cetera. And we're saying, look, I mean, 3% of the SM French SMBs are, are exporting, are making revenue outside France. Our companies are doing 40% of their revenues outside France. So we, we wanted to have these numbers to be able to say, look, we have an amaz amazing opportunity from an economical standpoint here to restore growth is to, I know we need to do a lot of things with the existing industry, but we should also have a second pillar on our economy strategy of, at the country level is to invest in certain number of sectors, priority sectors, and we believe digital economy is one. And the second thing is, we wanted to be able to restore the whole growth path mm. for the companies. Today, when you look at CAC 40, it's the companies are 70 years old. It's the same companies in the CAC 40 that were there 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. In, in the US, it's very different. You mm -hmm. have a, a real dynamics. I mean, Google is 20 years old. Facebook is eight years old. So y you have that. So we said it's, it's, it cannot, what we want to build is a path that makes the company be able to move up the ladder and not only stay with that 20, 50 million euro revenue rate and be bought by an American player, we also think that we should understand and look at what we can do to be able to build medium-sized companies and more even large companies coming out of that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So that's the objective. Great. <laughs> and I think the message there was if you want a long-term job at a young age, <laughs> go to a startup. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Mary. Thank you very much. We have time for one or two questions. If anyone has a question, just raise your hand. There we go. We have one in the back. If you don't mind introducing yourself, vous pouvez poser en français aussi, a pas de souci. Yes, I'm just uh, chef d'entreprise. <laughs> okay. Uh, just a question, very low level. Uh, I think I caught 
most of what you said, but even in French, I would not have all understood it was so fast. Uh, the, the, the only question is where we receive uh, some lines uh, from you uh, so that we are sure that we've well understood what you said. Uh, about uh, in what? English, even. Uh, uh, but, about uh, what specifically? C'est par rapport à France Digital ou uh, le, le financement en général? Non, non, je, je, je vous dis en français. Uh, 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 once again, in English. Where we receive some lines, some, some uh, transcripts from yes. you, so that we are sure that yes. we have understood what, we s what you said. Yes, there's, there's a, a brochure being written that's okay. a summary. That, of the that event. was just a question. What I quote was very understandable. Is there any questions? Even in French, there's no problem. Hi, uh, my name is Timothy. I'm a young entrepreneur. And I just have a question um, for you. Is uh, What do you think of the initiatives from uh, past successful entrepreneurs to gather in uh, mentoring pools? Uh, providing young uh, entrepreneurs like me, for example, uh, with a mentoring program and taking uh, shares in exchange, but without uh, bringing capital to the... Are you talking about an accelerator program? Not really an accelerator, because the, uh, this kind of uh, structure often bring a small amount of capital, mm -hmm. but there are initiatives such as uh, 50 Partners, mm -hmm. which is an uh, emanation from uh, Investir en Direct, which uh, provide uh, young young startups with a mentoring program, quite like a six months program, but without bringing uh, capital, uh, but taking shares, small shares, uh, small share of capital uh, in exchange. What do you think? Do you think it's worth it? Um, I think it depends on the type of mentoring you get and the amount of the capital you give. <laughs> So if you choose the right mentor and that you make sure that they will really be committed in giving you advice and spending the time and being available for you, and if it's not you know, too much capital being out of the company and that you feel comfortable with it, you should do it. If you are not comfortable with that, you shouldn't do it. My name's Delphine, I'm a young entrepreneur too. Um, do you think as a, uh, at a seed stage we can go directly to VCs or we need intermediaries? So at the seed stage, you will, it will be very difficult for you to raise the attention of intermediaries because you know the way they work. They get um, sometimes a, fi a fixed fee, a retainer, but it's usually success fees on the amount raised. And so taking Either they will take too much a percentage on the round, I mean, uh, when you come and get... Usually, uh, they will take five to six percent of the company, and if you're raising 100 to 200,000 euros, mm. it's not interesting for them. So it will be difficult for you to get a fundraiser if you're raising too little money, because it's, it's not in their business model. It's uh, too much work for too little money for them. And it won't be difficult to get the attention of VCs? <laughs> Well, now that I, my answer would have been different two years ago, and but I believe there's a lot of structures now with accelerators, le camping, or or um, um, to 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 get the contact with the VC. The problem is the contact with the VC. You know, you don't want to send an email. You know, y if you want to send an email, you want to say that person just told me to contact you because of and so and so. So to get that first thing, you need to be introduced and meet people in different events. And now it's the, the, the ecosystem is really structured. So you have many ways to meeting them without intermediaries, but it's, it has to be uh, um, done. So uh, now that you have funds like Elia, who are specifically focusing on the seed stage, I think you can just go to them as well. But it would have been different a couple of years ago because, I mean, there was Cap Decisive and Ile de France Développement, but there was very few funds focused on seed. Now you have a lot more. So now it's easier, I would say, and you can try uh, uh, without. But the, the best thing is to, um, I would say, maybe get advice beforehand with mentors that are uh, interested in helping out young companies and then go to VCs. That would be my advice. Thank you.
Great. So we're unfortunately going to stop questions there. If you guys have more questions for Maddie, maybe you can grab her uh, quickly before she leaves. But if we get a round of applause for amazing Maddie. Thank, Thank you. you.